Thanks, everybody. I'm Dana Jay on behalf of Henry Ford, and I have the pleasure of introducing today Bob Riney and Eric Wallace. They're going to do some prepared remarks for you, and then after that, they'll take questions. I'll do my best to call on you in the order in which I either see your questions in the chat or your uh, your hand go up virtually. So as you have questions, do let me know. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Riney. Bob. Thank you, Dana, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, for today's briefing, I'm really thrilled to be joined by Senior Vice President and Chief Nursing Officer Eric Wallace, who I might add is celebrating his birthday today. Eric assumed this new position on December 1st after serving as president of our Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital since 2019. Eric will provide an update on our recruitment strategies and offer perspectives on how the pandemic has shaped nursing for the future. Eric is a true nursing champion who brings change management skills to this very important role, a blend of nursing, executive and operational leadership, and a keen understanding of how to leverage technology and care design to empower our nurses to be their absolute best. You'll be hearing from Eric in just a few minutes. For an update on COVID hospitalizations, after weeks and weeks of giving you really sobering news, I'm really happy to report that we are starting, and I emphasize starting to see a trend that we hope will continue of decreased hospitalization. Overall, our census for COVID hospitalizations have declined since Monday when we had 551 patients hospitalized with COVID to this morning, that number being 499. That number includes two children under the age of 17. This is a very encouraging sign and certainly what we hope will be the beginning of a trend, but it's obviously too early. And 499 people inpatient with COVID is still a staggering number, but we are pleased that it is trending in the right direction. As we've highlighted in recent weeks, the data on people being hospitalized without a booster is quite striking, underscoring the importance and benefit of that third dose for added protection. More than 90% of all hospitalized people for COVID or in an ICU or on a ventilator did not receive a booster. Once you complete your original series of vaccines, be sure to get your booster shot for the best protection. Again, the numbers strongly, strongly support this. We know that vaccinated patients who receive a booster shot retain some additional and significant protection over unvaccinated patients in terms of decreased illness, decreased hospitalizations, and certainly decrease in any kind of death that we encounter. Another hopeful sign that we're seeing is the number of people getting infected every day is also slowing. So this is again something that gives us great hope. This morning, our positivity rate for all lab testing was 33%. That is down from 44% that we were trending in the first part of January. The Omicron variant is still extremely contagious and prevalent throughout the community. So it's important that we stay incredibly vigilant with mask wearing in indoor public settings and obviously vaccination and boosting. But we will take these trends as a sign of hope and a sign of optimism for days to come. On the operations side, we have 77 beds temporarily closed due to staffing. As of Monday, January 17th, 54 of those beds were at Henry Ford Hospital, 22 at Henry Ford Wyandotte Hospital, and one at Henry Ford Allegiance in Jackson. As we talked about, this number fluctuates daily depending on the conditions, and we monitor this a couple times a day. Last week, that number was 87 beds closure. So again, a theme of some numbers trending in the direction we'd like to see. As for the number of team members who are out of work due to positivity of COVID themselves from community spread, we currently have 473 team members off work, again, putting a substantial burden and pressure point on our organization, but down from 593 a week ago. So again, seeing a theme of this trend that we're very, very hopeful for. And this is such welcome news for the health and the strength and the resiliency of our team. But again, 473 off is just 473 too many. 
but it's certainly an improvement. Our team members continue to do an unbelievable job and they inspire us every single day with their fortitude and their heart, the heart that they bring into this battle two years plus in the making. So if you are a loved one, if you have a loved one or you yourself are being cared for by a healthcare worker or you cross paths with a healthcare worker, not just a Henry Ford Health System care worker, but any care worker, please, please be sure to tell them how much you appreciate them. That provides them some energy, it provides them hope, and it provides them recognition. And it is really important. It may seem simple, but we hear about how they are lifted when they just know the community says, we got you, we hear you, we understand, and boy, do we appreciate you. With that, I'll turn it over to our Senior Vice President and CNO, Eric Wallace. Thanks, Bob, and, and welcome, everyone. Uh, I really want to echo Bob's remarks uh, about our team members. Um, we are extremely proud of the entire team as they continue to demonstrate the utmost professionalism, respect, and excellence in caring for our patients. As the Chief Nursing Officer, I know that our nurses are often the, the, the face that our patients see the very most at their bedside. Uh, nurses take on the role of being their advocate, being their communicator, and being the person that is there to support the patient and ensuring that our patients achieve their very best outcomes. A sacred bond of trust uh, that patients have with nurses is, is unique. Um, last week, some of you may have seen that Gallup released their annual poll of the most honest and ethical professions, and nurses were again ranked at the very top of that poll now 20 years in a row. Um, we have to understand that our patients and their families trust nurses. Uh, we have the privilege of caring for people on what is often the worst day of their lives um, at a time of great anxiety and stress, um, like maybe in the middle of a pandemic. Um, it's incumbent on us to make sure that we continue to use that trust to help all of our patients um, under our care achieve their very best state of wellness. At the same time, I'm a keenly aware of the challenges of the nursing profession that uh, is currently facing. According to the recent data compiled by the American Hospital Association, nurse staffing demands at hospitals have increased by up to 245% uh, through this pandemic. Nurses have been leaving, healthcare, leaving the healthcare workforce at record rates, and that has led to increases in job vacancies across the country, in some cases by as much as a 30% increase in vacancies since 2019. Currently, Henry Ford has about 1,000 RN vacancies across our system, and that rate is very similar to what we're seeing in other healthcare systems in Michigan and across the country. To that end, we've engaged in a number of both short and long-term strategies to try to address that issue. Um, we're making some really great progress on, on an effort that we've talked about previously to recruit nurses in the Philippines. Um, and we're hopeful that we'll have our very first group of nurses joining us as early as this summer. Um, our plan right now is to uh, bring those folks on in a cohort fashion, 20 to 50 uh, nurses at a time at each one of our hospitals, uh, one hospital at a time. We want to do that so that as they relocate to Michigan, we want to help them build a sense of community and a support system around them. Um, we're, we're really blessed to have a number of Philippine nurses who were recruited all the way back in the 90s, who are still very much a part of our healthcare system, um, who have volunteered to be engaged in this effort um, so that we do this even better than it was done 30 years ago. Um, we're also excited about our partnership with Michigan State University and what that can bring in the long term. Currently, we have some Michigan State nursing students um, who are doing clinical rotations within our hospitals. Um, but we anticipate significant growth in these rotations as the years, as, as the years come. Um, we're encouraged by the number of nursing students uh, who are enrolling in nursing schools. Last April, the American Association of Colleges of Nursing reported that enrollment in bachelor's and master's level nursing programs were up 5 and 4% respectively. But we know that one of the challenges, even for our nursing school partners, to increase enrollment is that they're also short on nursing faculty. Um, we're hopeful that as we continue to partner with Michigan State, um, that we will uh, explore the potential of creating faculty opportunities for some of our own seasoned nurse leaders um, to help fill in that gap. We're also exploring new ways to enhance pay practices and other incentives to attract and retain nurses. 
It's going to be uh, continue to be important for us to build and grow our existing partnerships, not just with Michigan State, but with other schools here locally in the area, so that we can enhance opportunities to increase the number of nursing rotations and the nursing school slots available, um, and so that we can increase the diversity of our nursing workforce to continue to work toward better uh, reflecting the communities that we serve. Finally, we need to look at new models of care and how to better utilize the skills of our nurses as, as we support them. This includes, as Bob mentioned, looking at technology and automating processes that now take, uh, that, that now take a very uh, large amount of the time of our bedside nurses and looking at how do we automate those and move workload away from the nurse um, and giving them time back to spend with their patients and to be more efficient. I've been very privileged throughout my career to work in everything from small community hospitals uh, to very large academic medical centers. Um, having that experience and understanding of, of various nursing settings has been a benefit to me and, and I think is helping me to look at the bigger picture as we go through this uh, pandemic. Um, for our patients to get the very best care and very best outcomes in the, the healthcare team has to function at a very high level. Our nurses and the partnerships they have with physicians and other healthcare providers is essential. Um, one of the things that I am very focused on is ensuring that our nurses are viewed as trusted partners in the patient's care as well as with the entire healthcare team. Like our new billboards that are going up say, Henry Ford nurses are relentless caregivers and problem solvers. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Bob. Thank you, Eric. And uh, with that, um, Eric and I are happy to answer any uh, questions that you may have. Great. Thank you, Bob. And I'm hope Eric, can you all see the billboard? I put a picture of the billboard up on my end. Are you able to see it? You are? Okay. Well, great. So that should give you a, um, a sense of what those billboards look like. They're going up in a number of spots um, if you need them. So folks, if you have any questions, go ahead and raise your hand virtually or send me a message in the chat. I'm going to start with a question to Eric. Eric, you've had a long career in nursing. As you're speaking to nursing students now or people who may be considering going into the nursing field as we are in the middle of a pandemic, what do you tell them about this career path and um, to sort of encourage them to, to make this their vocation? You know, I think what's really great about nursing is every, day, every single day that you show up, you have the opportunity to make a difference in someone's life. Um, and, and there are certainly other professions where you can do that, but I think few of them have the intense personal touch that, that our nurses uh, at the bedside have the opportunity to, to, to take on or to, to you know, impart with their, with their patients. And so you know, I'm really encouraged that you know, while we talk a lot about the number of folks who have less, left the nursing workforce through the pandemic, um, you know, we're almost seeing record numbers of folks trying to enroll in nursing schools. Um, to join the healthcare profession because they've seen the value of nursing and they've seen the value of healthcare throughout this. So, um, you know, I, I, I know that we've got some uh, tough challenges in front of us, but it's encouraging to see that people still want to be involved in this in this profession that really is a sacred privilege. Thanks, Bob. Anything to add that to that? Not as a as a nursing student, but as somebody who came up through the healthcare industry. Yeah, and someone who's married to a nurse. Um, you know, I would just echo, uh, you know, Eric's comments. And, you know, I'll tie back to my comments about the um, reduction of numbers of hospitalizations of COVID patients that we're starting to see, because, you know, that's not just first and foremost important for the health of our community, but for every patient that's COVID positive that we can reduce from being in the hospital, we can start to think about how we give nurses time off, how we give them some much needed relief. And uh, so it's recruitment of nurses that's very, very important. And I share Eric's optimism, but we wanna retain those rich experienced nurses that have been you know, with us for two plus years through this incredible journey. And we need to get them a break. And so these numbers are not just important for the health of the community, they're really important for the stabilization of healthcare. Very good, thanks, Bob. Folks, any questions, go ahead and send me a message in the chat or put your hand up. Otherwise, I do have a hard out at 2 p.m. So I might just give these gentlemen 15 minutes of their day back. Um, 
In the meantime, though, Bob, you know, a couple of uh, questions on the news of the day. You know, we saw the federal government's website um, where folks can order their COVID tests come up. How do you hope that this will sort of help us curb what we're seeing in terms of our COVID numbers? Well, I think early, you know, detection helps people with behavior change and that reduces exposure and exposure reduces infectivity and therefore numbers. So it all relates. And I also think that there's a, a value of getting these test is, these testing uh, equipment out there because it tells people that we need their help, that we need them to partner with us. And we're removing barriers in them being that partner. We're removing economic barriers with tests as well as just ease and convenience. And so I think it has a reinforcing message that, you know, one of the reasons we're seeing these numbers come down is because we get the message out and there's some level of behavior modification in people, and then it results in a positive thing. So this cause and effect is very, very important and it can't get overstated enough. All right, great. Well, I'm going to take the fact that we're not seeing any questions as an indication that we did a really great job of putting together information in our briefing. And I do have a message, though. Here, Kristen Seamus, go ahead and open your mic and ask your question. Sorry to ruin everybody's fun. I just <laughs> wondered if right. you could give us an update on the number of staff members out with COVID or COVID exposure at Henry Ford Health System. And is that improving, too? It is, Kristen. We have 473 team members off, and a week ago that was 593. So all these trends are aligning and pointing in the right direction. Thanks very much. Have a great day. Thanks, Kristen. Okay, well, Bob, Eric, thank you so much. Eric, happy birthday, Bob. Anything you want to add before we close things out? No, I just appreciate the continued interest in uh, spreading the message. Uh, it's, it's having an impact. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Have a great afternoon.